Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forged Alliance. Uh, well, not quite. This will be a video about Supreme Commander Forged Alliance economy and uh, one way of thinking about it. Before I jump into that, I'd like to make a plea to anybody who knows computers and who can make uh, sense of what Pilot's talking about. Uh, but basically the problem is uh, Forged Alliance Forever, when it plays a replay, uh, it plays at slightly different speeds on different computers, even if you set it at plus zero, plus one, whatever. The plus zero plus one is a different on different computers. So if there's a really good replay and you want two casters, let's say me and Guile, I'd love to do a cast with Guile. It'd be just awesome. I think we would make a great uh, team uh, and plenty of other casters out there. And especially with a game this complex, uh, it's good to bring in two, three people and bring in the players who played in the game. I mean, you can have discussions uh, based on 10 minutes of a replay, but if you don't have that ability to get a number of people on the same point at the same time in a game because of this technical thing, it, everything basically it just becomes a lot of frustration. It doesn't happen, as you've probably noticed. Uh, there is an exemption if it's a live replay. That does happen sometimes, but of course, catching a live replay and which one, the, the one that's really good, is usually a difficulty given that we're not uh, professionals here, we all have other lives. So uh, I will put a link into the description if you know things about Java and how to basically make a replay, uh, a live replay. Uh, that would be awesome. This would be a huge help. So uh, that's about it on that. I'll jump straight into the economy. So real economy and uh, the only real uh, RTS. This will be a couple analogies. Uh, these may be analogies you'll disagree with, but uh, of course there isn't such a thing as a correct analogy. It's just a model that I'll try to create uh, for people to try to think maybe differently. Maybe this is how you've been thinking about it, but don't fall into the trap of thinking uh, that just because I got an analogy wrong that doesn't go with what you're thinking of, that means it's uh, not useful. But hopefully most people don't do that. Uh, I'd love to see some discussions about what they think about this in the comments. So the, the different resources, I like to make the analogy between mass and money, and I'll describe what I mean by money and mass later on. Uh, the workforce, your build capacity, engineers and factories. And uh, I think about energy, the best way to think about it is the regulations uh, or an access. It's more of a political thing. And... Um, or you can think of it as a tech tree uh, that you have in other games, but this is a lot more abstract uh, and I think a lot more connection to the actual game than just a tech tree like in Spring Commander 2. So uh, let's see how this goes. So the analogy between money and mass, you got to look at the different types. When you have money uh, in the real world, there's uh, you can put it into different uh, places. There's liquid that's just cash you have in your bank that you can go on ahead and buy whatever you want with it um, given that you have the right if you want to go buy drugs or weapons of a certain type you may first need to uh, pay somebody off to do that so there is a limit to it but basically mass uh, or mass and storage or money in the bank is very liquid you can do almost anything you want with it and of course there's invested mass say you're selling oranges or whatever uh, and you're going to be waiting for a profit. You can feel like it's uh, your money because there's a piece of paper or you believe somebody who took your money uh, and you're expecting a return. And very similar in Supreme Commander, you've invested money, say, into an assault group and you expect them to go and kill something and then you'll reclaim it or kind of like destroying somebody else's economy makes your economy better in relation. Or the most simple thing, uh, just mass extractor upgrades. That's very much, or just taking a mass extractor point and putting a tech one mass extractor on it. That's a very simple investment of 32 mass that will give you a return of two mass per tick. So that's the invested, and that's very obvious. Of course, then you can go tech one, tech two, tech three, all the other stuff. And another kind of math mass uh, that you have is all the infrastructure. You have all your units. Uh, that you can go ahead and reclaim and get the mass back. But that's not quite liquid. It's something that takes work, takes uh, some organization. So it's not readily available, not like the mass and storage. And uh, the sources for money, uh, you can find it either you already have it or it's just sitting on the ground. 
your friends, whatever, uh, in uh, Spring Commander it's a little easier. It's all the reclaimables on the map uh, that you have, plus your own units, your enemies units, things that you kill, and there's the incoming profits from prior investments. And uh, I don't want to limit it just to uh, mass extractors because it's a little bit bigger than that, but if you want to just think about it, think about it as the extraction of mass from uh, the mass points. That's basically your constant incoming profit that you've invested in that keeps on giving. And of course you can lose it. So that's uh, the basic analogy with mass. Some of the properties of mass, and I think this one is huge, inflation. And uh, you can think about in inflation that if you have a bunch of cash, but you have nowhere to invest it in, you can go home buying some useless things, but if you don't invest it into something that will give you money back, education, a business, whatever, you're probably not going to have it because you'll always spend on some random things. Uh, very similar um, Supreme Commander. If you don't spend your mass, eventually that mass will be worth much less than what you, what it was to begin with. And you can think about it in terms of a 500 mass. If you could have 500 mass right at the starting point, like something like a reclaimable, say a dead uh, loyalist, that would make you so much more powerful than any other player that doesn't have that. But at the same time, if you were to get that loyalist wreck 10 minutes, it's really not that big a deal. It'd be kind of cool, but it's not going to make you super powerful. So very important to remember that mass doesn't get better with time. It always decreases. Mass that isn't invested is basically always losing uh, value. And another very key point is that mass in Supreme Commander, it always increases. It's an expansion, uh, kind of like the capitalist system we've had that takes over the world. Uh, you always have more and more money it doesn't disappear unless you have some monetary revolution you have Ron Paul that says you need gold or whatever then of course you have a total collapse of the entire system but that does not happen um, because of course money can buy you many different things so both money and mass they do not disappear they always increase so the money that you have that you're not spending becomes less and less as a fraction of the total monetary supply And another very important uh, part about money and mass is uh, the investment cycle. Basically, at first you make an investment. Here you can see uh, on the left side on the time axis, it goes from time zero. That's when you decide to do something like a tech one to tech two mass upgrade. You're constantly investing that mass. It's not being used in anything else. At some point you finish it, and then it be the mass structure starts giving back that mass, and eventually... After a few minutes, you'll actually be in the positive. You'll it'll make more mass than you invested. If you actually adjust it for inflation, it looks quite a bit different. You can see that the, the part where you're making the profit really levels off. And uh, a tech one, a mass extractor, is a lot better early on than later on. So uh, that investment opportunity also loses value. And that investment that you've made loses value with time. And uh, looking at these plots, you can see that uh, really good use of uh, these plots is to take things out right after they're upgraded. If you see somebody taking a uh, mask tracker from Tech 1 to Tech 2, and you have an opportunity to snipe it, say cruise missiles, by far the best time to do it is right when it's finished. Same thing with the Tech 2 PGN uh, or a factory that's upgraded. They've made that investment, they completely went in, and then you take that away. That's the worst thing that can happen you very very demoralizing that's when a lot of people rage quit when things like that happen and uh, of course preventing the completion yeah, so right before you get to that blue line you just shut off the build capacity that is very uh, painful for another player of course that's quite obvious I think for people who play this game all the time and uh, at the same time there's bad things you can do given these plots if you have invested mass and then you just flatten out. Uh, you don't get anything back for it. For example, made a whole big army of Tech 1 that's just sitting there. And it's getting basically obsolete with time. Because besides monetary inflation, there is weapons inflation as well. Although it's not as a strict rule in this game. But you want to really get 
that return as quickly as possible because the further you go, the return will be less because of inflation. Another point is not uh, building your mass extractors uh, on mass points, but at the same time, uh, not upgrading your tech one mass extractors to tech two uh, together with the rest of the players in the game is also a huge uh, lost opportunity. It's very similar to just having a uh, empty uh, mass point. Same thing as having a tech one mass extractor later on in the game or a tech two mass extractor later on in the game, something not to do. And a really big one that especially newer players don't do is after you've uh, built an army, so you made that investment, you've won a battle, and then you did not send any engineers to reclaim the battlefield to get all that reclaim. And that's really the huge payoff that you can have. And you want to do that as early as possible, once again, because of the inflation. So moving on uh, to the workforce, this is a, a little more straightforward. I mean, there's three things you, you want to think about. Number one is really the amount that you have, and that really has to depend on how late you are in the game, uh, how much mass you have available to spend, and what is your strategy. You, you've got to have a strategy that will require a certain number of units to get a certain goal. You want to have all those things be in balance with each other. If you don't have enough capacity, you're going to struggle. Too much capacity, you're also going to struggle. Although not as much, you're just not as uh, not as balanced as you should be. And of course, at the same time, besides the number, it's also special specialization, and that's the tech level. Plus, together with the NG uh, mod now, it is that ratio between supporting factories uh, and engineer. So engineer assist versus uh, supporting factory number. Those are really strategic uh, choices that you have to make based on what you're trying to do. And the most important one, really the logistics, is the distribution of your build capacity throughout the battlefield, throughout your base, how you organize it. You want to really minimize the amount you have, but maximize the effectiveness. So that means that you want to get engineers from one place to another as quickly as possible. You want to have them close to your projects. And you can really see that in some uh, Sentinels players playing in the back, uh, how they have really a plan for the first 10 minutes exactly where all their engineers are going to be. And they're going to be doing exact things at the right right time. And this optimization, especially if you watch some German players, it's really quite amazing. It's one of the most, uh, I think, interesting things in this game. It's that, uh, for example, if you look at Blackheart's bases, the way he builds his factories, the way he um, sends out the different engineers and the total number of engineers that he uses, it seems so well optimized. But at the same time, it doesn't look like it's, pre-planned so it's kind of like natural so maybe it's uh, pre-planned I'm not sure but uh, yeah so that's one of the things that you can see in this game really distribution in space of all the engineers and that really what separates some of the top players from the rest of the good ones and of course you can draw analogies to real life here quite easily and then uh, the final analogy here between energy and like think of it as public relations because it's really uh, you always have to pay your taxes you always have to pay the government the country whatever you're part of and the more you pay them the more freedom you have if you want to put something illegal do something illegal you just gotta pay a lawyer or you gotta go buy yourself a senator if you want to do something really crazy and then you can do it same thing in Supreme Commander the more power you buy the more things you can do and that really is in the ratio between the mass and energy for different projects. You can see how it spans uh, a huge number of numbers. It's basically two orders of magnitude between a Tech 1 tank, which is just a ratio of 5, to a nuclear missile, which is a ratio of 100. You can see ASF also very similar to nuclear missiles, but the most expensive one I've seen for the Aeon ACU, the second shield, really takes huge amounts of power. And what, what this does is it makes it um, that space of possibilities a, a lot more complex just because you have the mass for it doesn't mean you can get it first you have to have a pretty big base in order to afford in order to be allowed to make that that's why the telemaser can be pretty low in mass but you can't really get it early on 
because the power that you need for it will, if you try to get it, will completely stall your entire economy. And this is actually some very sad thing that was taken out of uh, planetary annihilation. The um, this public relations and access was given over to the engineers. So I like to think of it as kind of like a communist system, power to the worker uh, and uh, total nonsense. Really rather sad that they made that uh, choice. But uh, that's how it is because I guess uh, the gamers of today like communism better than uh, capitalism of Supreme Commander Forged Alliance. So a couple things that can go wrong here using our analogies. So what we have is basically no mass and a whole bunch of engineers making it fatty. So this is a total disaster. And uh, one of the ways you can think about it, it's a deflationary crisis. So it's a huge unemployment because you cannot, you don't have the money or the mass to pay your workforce. And uh, the solutions for it are in real life, you, you take loans, you ask outside bodies to give you money like the IMF, or if you're in the United States, you just uh, ask the Federal Reserve to print you some dollars. And similar to the Paragon that we have in uh, Aeon. Uh, but this actually happens quite often to people who just jump into the game or who are in some situation in the game, they feel like they really need that unit and then they start building it, but they're just not ready to have it. So it's a, it's a wrong strategic choice. But there are a number of things you can do. When you're in that state, you're actually in a perfect position to get reclaim or to get donations from allies. This is what you really want to do. If you have an ally who's doing this, who have this disbalance, it's very good to feed a mass, assuming that the unit that they chose to build is something useful. If they're just building some random stuff, of course, they don't deserve your mass. But this is a perfect time. Or another thing that can uh, be done is some of the build capacity can be given over to an ally that has mass. So you can do it in two different ways. And of course, pausing on essential projects in this situation is the simplest solution. But that's uh, one thing that can go wrong. And the opposite end is when you have a player who thinks having a lot of mass is a good thing. Uh, kind of like people who just like money, who have no idea what they're actually going to do with it. Uh, you're just wasting mass without building anything. And this actually happens quite often. A lot of times people who come from other real-time strategy games, they jump in and then they start building a factory and then they think, oh, I'm going to get this crazy unit in 20 minutes that's going to win the game for me but this entire time they're just wasting huge amounts of mass and then suddenly they realize they need to play and they jump into the other and so they go from inflationary to deflationary and then they get frustrated and then they never play it again but it's really uh like in real life if you have too much money and you have no workforce that can actually use it what actually begins to happen uh is uh, the money isn't spent and you have inflation because the overall global economy progresses. So if you have money that's just sitting in the bank, it continuously loses value. And uh, of course, in the real world, that's also connected to the currency that's particular to the country. And then once you have secondary things that happen, like faith in that currency drops and then people sell it off and that really gets exacerbated. But in Supreme Commander, that just means you're sitting there um, not using your mass, even though you have a whole bunch for minute five or whatever, and you don't invest it, a player who has less than you but is investing it is going to have much more in 10 minutes. So the obvious thing to do here is to give a mass to an ally or ask an ally to give you an engineer. So you can see this duality between mass and engineers. Or you can do some uh, mass-heavy projects, something like naval experimentals, mass structure upgrades. Of course, that does assume that you do have the power to support that. And uh, the easiest way to uh, fix this problem is to, to spam a whole bunch of Tech 1 land factories and have them spam Tech 1 engineers. And when you're in this problem, uh, you can easily solve it within a few minutes. It's really not nearly as bad as having the other deflationary problem. That's kind of why uh, in the United States when there's a crisis they don't do this silly thing and uh, kill themselves like some other countries do. Uh, they go ahead and uh, inflate and just coast. But that is a difficult concept for some people. Uh, 
and of course, if you want banking without fees, uh, you got to get the economy man manager mod. So hopefully I wasn't rambling too much and this was useful to some people.